What's going on guys? My name is Anthony Flores and today I'm going to be presenting you my presentation on the legal issues in kinesiology. So for facility background, I chose gym ownership that specializes within personal training and strength and conditioning. Um, but basically, that's, that's my biggest thing. I really enjoy working with a lot of people and I really enjoy like, you know, helping other people get stronger, get better, that kind of stuff, right? And then the interesting fact for people to look into personal trainers is that there's always a number of people that are looking to get to a CPT certificate from an accredited organization, and they're looking into the same goal as well, they're helping other people get better, and then therefore we actually have an increased number of personal trainers over the year. Like every year is always increasing exponentially big time like that. So therefore the growth margin for, for Sorry, the high growth and the profit margin would be 10.1%, which means that we actually they're actually making 1.3 billion per year at average for like for the number of uh, people they're working with, the business they're running, all the kind of stuff within that you know fit, fitness industry. And then regarding the number of personal trainers being increased, we actually had about 1.7% increase from the year 2016 as compared to the year 2023. So why personal training? Like I said, um, personal training, the biggest goal is to be able to help um, motivate people, become the best person themselves, help them achieve things that they never thought they could do possible. You know, basically unlocking their potential, getting stronger, getting healthier. And as, personal, and as a personal trainer myself, I really do want to get back to the community big time. Like not a lot of people have access to certain resources, especially when it comes to like, you know, getting... Especially when it comes to like certain professionals to help them get back on track and get in their health. So my number one goal is basically to get back to the community and be like, hey, I'm here. I want to be able to help you guys out the best way as possible. Then you guys got goals to achieve. Let's set them up and then I'm here to help you get help you achieve your goals. So when it comes to personal training, there's a couple things that we really need to look into, especially when it comes to like certain lawsuits that are against personal trainers. So the most common issue with personal trainers basically have to do with like negligence as well as liabilities. Um, Negligence involving like a bunch of personal trainers like neglecting certain uh, certain clients' health, as well as not taking their training reg uh, regimen really really seriously, um, which basically leads to like a lot of injuries. And those injuries can be involving liability, not just for you, not for just for yourself, but also for the business that you're actually working for. Whether you're working for like a commercial gym, private gym, or working for like you know your own you know study uh, studio. You need to every personal trainer really needs to look into um well, what sort of risk factors are going to be causing for their own business that way they can be able to take preventive measures on keeping that, on keeping that from happening which we're going to be talking about right now. So when it comes to talking about like certain uh, lawsuits against personal trainers, we have to be familiar with some of the common injuries that occur to the client's physical being. Sometimes it can also occur to the personal trainer as well, but it depends on certain situations that actually cause such injuries, such as misuse of equipment or like doing exercise wrong. And I mean, even a coach needs to coach, you know, and that's why we're going to be learning this right now. So the most common injury that occurs when the client's physical well-being, we do know that the most, number one factor would be lumbar strain. And lumbar strain could be a occurrence of like performing exercises wrong, whereas they're suffering uh, piriformis syndrome, sciatica. It could be like a pinched nerve within that low back region. And sometimes it can also be a compressed disc or a slip disc, or therefore like a hernia. Um, that could be like a like excessive overload within their backs or and or it could be could think, uh could be doing particular techniques of a certain movement wrong, such as doing back squat, deadlift, power cleans. Those particular movements can definitely put a tear, uh, can put a lot of stressor within the low back if not performed correctly. Which is why they always say, technique, technique, technique. It doesn't matter how much you can lift. If you do not have technique for a certain lift, then you're basically going to be injuring yourself in, in the long run. And then the second factor would be rotator cuff tear. We could be we could be a contributor to like uh like doing particular like pushes, pulls, um, like an overhead presses kind of stuff. Those kind of injuries can be can also be a stress loader within the shoulder, especially when you look at the ball socket on the shoulder. It's basically a socket sitting on the wall. So any particular misuse of the movements or equipment, it would definitely cause um, that ball socket to be moving up and down, back and forth in the wall, and therefore not like enough uh, strengthening within that shoulder region. 
And then you would have like shin splint and ankle sprain would definitely be the number one would, would definitely be a contributor to the to the injury. So ankle sprain could be that you're doing plyometric uh, training and you missed up your uh, jumps like pod box jumps or box jumps, hurdle jumps, whatever you name it. And if you land your feeding wrong, then it could then it could be leading to ankle sprains. And as far as shin splint goes, mostly shin splints will have to do with like you know discomfort of the feet. So especially when it comes to like wearing particular shoes that are not designed for a workout, like for like everyday casual shoes and stuff like that. Um, that wouldn't be good for like, you know, running or stuff like that, you know, <laughs> or if you wore like particular shoes that um, aren't designed for like, yeah, for, like I said, for running, cardio, endurance, then those definitely can bring like a lot of discomfort within your feet in the long run. And therefore the ball of your feet could definitely transfer within the shin splint on your foot. And you would definitely feel it more within the shin area, the calf area. And that will cause you like, Hey, I need to change the, change the way I'm wearing my shoes. And of course, we also got muscle, uh, cervical muscle strain, which is basically a neck injury. You're moving around too much, and you cause like a bunch of cracks up within his neck, and that's okay. So the you know, the number one thing that we're gonna be talking about more is have to do with the personal training education experience. So there's like a lot of people that get certifications um, from accredited organization. Um, and majority of accredited organizations only allow high school diplomas. And there are some places that allow at least those degrees or bachelor's degrees or so on and so forth, depending on that level of expertise that they have within that organization. But there are a lot of personal trainers out there that do not have exercise science uh, or kinesiology related bachelor's degree. And that could be an issue when it comes to having hands on and uh, education experience background. So then these are the good, some of the good example law cases that we need to be familiar with um, that could be involving liability and edulence. So like, for example, the Baltimore v. Coffice uh, lawsuit, um, the defendant, which happened to be the personal trainer in the fitness industry, they failed to take measurable approaches to the client's training, therefore would actually increase liability. So when you prescribe certain exercises that are beyond the the uh, the client's physical capability, um, that client is definitely going to be suffering like a massive injury in the long run. So therefore, what's happened to this uh, client end up suffering permanent injuries within the neck region and it was not okay. And then therefore, um, that, you know, plaintiff ended up filing a $1.4 million dollar lawsuit tore against the defendant and therefore, yeah, and something else you really got to watch out for. And you also got the Ross Dye versus Nest Enterprise. Basically, it also had to do with another Nedulens, but a little bit more, you really need to look into the, uh, the client's background a little more often. Which is why for every personal trainer, they have, to have, they have to fill out, they have to have their client fill out medical forms in order to be, um, in order to have a better understanding about what the client could be going through. It could be diabetes, it could be um, certain diseases like the neurological, like MS, multiple sclerosis, or like you know Parkinson's disease, and therefore if you prescribe certain exercises beyond that physical capability. Then that, like I said, that's going to cause like a lot of injuries in the long run, and this uh, plaintiff ended up suffering a heart attack as a result. And then you also got the Gunfree versus Crowder, which I mentioned before, education background, education experience always tend to outrank everything, especially when um, having education experience would definitely give you the knowledge of what you can do to help better that client's you know personal well-being as well as their health. So the four common risks that we need to look into for personal trainers would be um injury to the client being supervised so like i said um physical capability is the number one priority that personal trainers really need to look into so that way when they're working with the client they're able to provide a safe effective exercise but at the same time help that client see results needed as to every two weeks go by like a month go by depending on how long that program in particular is and then when it comes to making false claim about expertise, a personal can, a personal trainer cannot just go off and say, oh yeah, well I got my I got my certification from, from very high highly accredited uh, you know organization. I've trained back to back conference champions and stuff like that within my ledger, and then I've trained a bunch of people that make, bring massive massive PRs and their lifting numbers and stuff like that. And then saying something like that would Definitely get the client's attention, but, the, the, but at the same time, the personal trainer really got to back it up. If they can't back it up, it can also be like a very, very big issue between both um, themselves as well as their clients. And then sometimes something like that can also lead to the outside scope of practice. Now, as personal trainers, 
when I mentioned before that when a personal trainer can have to ask uh, their clients to fill out medical history forms, that does not mean they cannot medically diagnose nor advise uh, taking any certain supplements going to help them out with their health. And um, so if, if so if, if if any client happens to be going through any particular physical specific conditions, then that client really needs to talk to their medical health care professional um, to formulate a personal health care plan before being prescribed any particular exercise that might affect their health in the long run. And then last but not least, the biggest issue would be promising clients unrealistic results. And that's something we really, really need to be uh, that to be to be careful of because Anyone can be drawn to anything. So if a client were to see you and you're like a big jack bodybuilder kind of stuff, and then therefore you give them like exercises and you give them exercises that think, oh, can these help muscle mass? They probably do. But at the same time, you got to be realistic with those goals on how they can be in the long run. So if you want to be a big bodybuilder, that's a good long-term goal. But what are the checklist of short-term goals going to help you out within the long run on that particular, on that particular, you know, achievement? So when it comes to running a gym business as a personal trainer, there's like a literally a few things that we really need to look into. One of them would be identifying risk hazard that could be an issue within your fitness facility, such as verifying exercise equipment. Do the cable are the cables saved? They need to be replaced. Are the bolts like locked up tight on certain machines and stuff like that, right? And also you have to ensure that the floors are clean. Yeah, people are working out, they're sweating a lot, so therefore they're dripping everywhere. Um, but at the same time, you also want to be sure that the floors are clean, so whether you have the janitor or custodian coming around, clean the place off, they do a specific job, but at the same time, when the floors are wet, you have to make sure those, uh, those hydro signs are up to, to give people a warning that the floors are definitely wet. So now, when it comes to looking at the client's physical well-being, you also got to be sure about uh, the risk factors of a client's health, such as their age, their physical capabilities, their existing medical, their existing medical conditions, as well as having an understanding about what is their knowledge and skill of these do, of doing these particular activities. Do they have experience in that, or do they not have experience in that? So then, when it comes to like a personal trainer, there's like a few things that we need to look into, especially when it comes to like gym ownership for personal training, is that liability issues. So what are the liability issues? It could be related to like injuries or other health-related concerns. Those liability issues can also be something that um, every gym owner really needs to look into in terms of like getting a liability insurance. And liability insurance can definitely like be able to help them out uh, on the long run for protection, as well as making sure there are some certain accommodations for that particular client. There's also a discrimination issue within the sports industry. Everyone's looking for a specific type. Everyone's looking for so-and-so. But, like, literally, it shouldn't be the case because if that person has, like, a certain experience and have a really, really good resume on, on the background, then what's wrong with going to them, you know? That person could be, like, a former Olympian for God knows what, as long as, you know, if you have, like, a certain – if you've done your research on that particular trainer and know what you're getting into, and then that way you build a work with that trainer to help you to achieve your goal. Or if you got a son or daughter that, uh, trying to achieve an accomplishment in sport, then that personal trainer could be able to help you out. And then another stuff we have to look into is personal trainer accreditation issues. So there are a lot of people out there running their own private business, but sometimes when it comes to being a personal trainer, they don't necessarily have certificates at least, but that's something we really, really need to work into, especially when it comes to like working and hiring the people um, within uh, that they're trying to work within the fitness industry as you know personal trainers. So. <clears throat> There are a few laws that we have to. There are a couple laws that we have to abide by when it comes to like personal training, especially when it comes to like the hiring process. So the first one would be the uh, Title VII, which is Civil Rights Law of 1964. Basically, this law actually prohibits uh, employment discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. And so when it comes to like hiring a potential candidate to be a per a, be a coworker or a personal trainer for your studio. Um, you really have to go with what their what the background is. It doesn't matter like who where they're from, who they are. If they have like a really really good resume on their background, then there's no reason for you not to hire them because of their race, color, religion, sex, and national origin. If they got the rep, if they got the good resume on that particular interest, there, then there shouldn't be any wrong with actually building hiring them kind of stuff. So. 
And then you have Title IX, and Title IX itself is literally the biggest contributor in, in the health fitness industry, especially when it comes to sports. So it prohibits uh, sex-based discrimination, including sexual harassment, and it also helps ensure that both male and female students and employees in, the, in educational settings are treated equally and fairly. And like I said, this heavily applies involvement in sports as well, especially when it comes to like certain concerns, uh, such as like, you know, budgeting, stuff like that, make sure everyone has their par. And Title IX also helped promote gender equity as well in terms of that Okay, application. So as a gym owner and personal training studio, I myself, I want to make sure that the laws are, about, are applied and abided by it. That way, everyone feels safe within that uh, within that environment, and that way, everyone have goal uh, are able to achieve their goals and are able to do things that they want to do. And at the same time, they're able to unlock potential for something that they thought they couldn't do, but they're able to do it. So at the same time, when it comes to running a personal training studio, you also want to make sure that the equipments are safe and effective to use, as in, like, you know, making sure there's no, like, you know, breakage or make sure there's no, like, potential wire snapping on cable, on cable machines. So therefore, I would definitely have to be able to do my best to clear potential hazards. If something needs maintenance, I can do the best I can to make sure that stuff is taken care of and, and, uh, and fixed for everybody to use. As, and not to mention, last but not least, got to be insurance and com and compensation. So insurance to make sure that there's like a protective protection liability between both as a personal trainer and the clients. And there's also should be some compensation. So if I were to hire personal trainers in the future to help me work with the uh, with the client, have like this ever growing business, then if the personal trainer would get used, then there's also got to be some certain compensation that has to be applied for um for the personal trainers. And here we have faith integration. <laughs> so the number one verse I always go by, and it pretty much goes for anybody involved within sports or like health and fitness, Philippians 4.13, which uh, quotes, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Everybody has obstacles. Everybody has obstacles. Everybody has things that they're going through at the moment, right? Um, so therefore, by following the verse of Philippians 4.13, you can be able to achieve, uh, you're able to stand up against all odds and be able to do things that you should be able to can do. And therefore, the obstacles are no longer going to be obstacles for you. It's like literally straightforward and the goal like one step at a time and you're like right there. The Chariot 10, uh, 10 12. I'll strengthen them in, in the Lord and his name they will walk, declares the Lord. So this one, when it comes to like working with particular groups of people, um, this really is, it really is a really a key goal. You train them, you strengthen them, you nurture them, and eventually, you know, they're definitely becoming the best version of themselves in a, in a very, very long run. And then Deuteronomy uh, 31.6, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid and or terrified because of them. For the Lord, your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So... When there's like a lot of things that are, that are coming up, that's like I said, the obstacles, barriers, hard times that are coming up. And trust me, everyone's going to be having hard times left and right. So the one thing we really have to look into is basically knowing that God is with us and that with him, we're able to overcome all these barriers and obstacles. Have faith, have hope. And after that, then everything that we have achieved for would definitely be worthwhile. So that is it, guys. That's my presentation for the legal aspects in kinesiology. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments down below. I would love to get the to get with you guys and see what and answer your questions as best as possible. If you guys got any questions relating to personal training, if you guys got any other questions regarding like other legal aspects of personal training, um, I'll definitely do the best I can to answer those as best as possible. So that way, because you know stuff like that being learned, you know, not only that you're learning it, but I'm also learning it at the same time too, because the fact that there's always new law knowledge being applied to every single day so without further ado guys hope you guys uh take care and the lord will be with you always bye